feedback is probably one of the hot topics in UK higher education at the moment and it's not surprising that that's the case because it is a powerful mechanism to enhance student learning. However, feedback is also an area of significant student dissatisfaction as we find through instruments such as the National Student Survey. It's a complex concept and there are numerous definitions that you might find. Uh, a definition that I favour comes from the Australian academic Roy Sadler. Um, Royce defines feedback as uh, a mechanism to help students understand learning goals and it's about enabling students to bridge the gap between their current status and a desired status in relation to a particular learning task. Feedback has um, a significant influence on learning. It can be a powerful tool to affect um, enhancements in the evaluative skills that students have. It can help them to um, self-regulate their learning, to self-monitor. It's also a powerful motivational tool um, when used effectively. And for those students, particularly those students studying at a distance, um, it can help reduce isolation. So feedback is very, very important. So how do we engage our students with feedback? Well, I said earlier that feedback is a really complex concept and this is where I go to exemplify why that's the case. It's not about how quickly we return feedback to students. Although timeliness is important, it's more important that students receive their feedback at a point where they can actually apply it to future assessment tasks. So really we're thinking about our curriculum design, the sequencing of the assessment tasks within our modules, the types of assessment tasks that we use. We also need to think about the quality of the feedback that we give to our students if we want to engage them. Students are very critical about the feedback they receive. They describe it as being cryptic or vague or sometimes full of academic jargon that they just can't interpret. So we need to think about the language of feedback as well. So if we want to engage students with feedback, we need to think about our curriculum design, the sequencing of assessment tasks, the quality of feedback that we give and importantly the language of the feedback. Okay, to develop a sustainable feedback strategy, first of all, we have to recognise that feedback doesn't have to be the responsibility purely of the teacher. Our current feedback methods are what we would typically describe as being monologic in nature. They're based on transmission models. I would argue that we need to move towards more dialogic approaches, which recognises that feedback can be a two-way exchange. So we're introducing um, opportunities here for peer assessment um, and also an exchange between the student and the teacher, so a reciprocal exchange. We also need to look at the balance of assessment across our courses. Do we need so many summit assessments? What is the relationship between different assessment tasks? So again, we're thinking about the sequencing of assessment across our modules and programmes. We also need to think about the types of feedback that we provide, and by that I'm meaning are we providing it in a written format? Are we providing audio feedback? Can technology help us provide feedback in a more efficient way? So a sustainable um, feedback strategy would recognise that feedback doesn't have to be the responsibility of the teacher. It should ideally be dialogic in nature. It will consider the balance of assessment across a degree programme and it will also consider different methods of providing feedbacks to students, potentially involving the use of technology. Okay, here's my question for you. The types of assessment tasks we use and the criteria and weightings that we apply to them tell our students a great deal about the attributes that we value. Thinking about the types of assessment tasks you use within your degree programmes, what do they tell your students about the attributes that you value?